Hello, in today's video I want to give you a very quick and compact overview about the very popular star trackers uh, that are available currently on the market. First let's start with the smallest one. This is the so-called TS Nano Tracker. As you see very very compact. It's just one piece is the motor with the photo thread on it and the second one is a hand box which acts also as a battery holder. Uh, there are just three uh, buttons and switches on it. The first is for the speed selection, one time speed or half time speed. The second one is for the hemisphere selection, northern or southern hemisphere. And of course the on off switch. It acts also as a holder for three AA batteries. It acts also as a holder for three AA batteries which come into the back. So what we have to do is, we put uh, the tracker on our ball head. You can use whatever head you have on your tripod, no, no problem. Also gear head, freeway head, it's fine. And then we have it to align it to Polaris. And then we can do this with the help of this little hole which is integrated in the housing. You can look through this hole and use it as a peephole to align the tracker to Polaris by the help of your ball head some way like this and then tie everything up and then we have to mount our second ball head on this photo thread here and this is where your camera goes into now you can freely align your desired frame uh, whatever you want to capture, maybe with a bit of horizon in it or foreground. And then just power it on, let it run for a couple of minutes to get all the gears aligned inside and then you're good to go and it's working. Well, this nano tracker is designed for very lightweight cameras, something like a small DSLM and a wide angle lens. Nothing more than 35 millimeters according to a full frame. But if you want to use heavier equipment or a bit more focal length, like 85, 100 millimeter, then you can choose this one. This is the so-called iOptron Sky Tracker Pro. Uh, it follows the same principle as the Nano Tracker, but with a couple of differences. The first thing is you get this polar wedge here that helps you uh, to precisely align it to Polaris by the help of an altitude screw and an azimuth screw. You can freely uh, align it and there's also a bubble level integrated to bring everything in level before starting anything here. The second addition is this one here. This is a polar scope which helps you to precisely align the tracker to Polaris to make the tracking even more precise. There are little circles engraved here and these are illuminated by LED which is inside the housing and a very interesting thing is because it is on a side it is not covered by your ball head that you have to attach here that means even with connected ball head and camera you can polar align it that's a very nice feature which the others do not have so uh, let's have a look on the back we have on-off switch, um, fast forward motor switch, we have uh, the illumination button for this integrated LED. We have uh, four speed options, lunar, solar, one time sidereal and half time sidereal and also the north-south switch for your hemisphere. It is powered by an internal lithium ion battery uh, which is uh, also rechargeable by the use of the external USB port. And last thing, there's also a little peephole integrated on the top left here of the housing where you can on the first hand uh, roughly align it to Polaris before switching to the Polar Scope. And this, this setup uh, is designed for something around or up to 100 millimeter maybe you can use it for 150 millimeters and also a bit heavier cameras for example um, entry-level DSLRs with a wide-angle lens or with a 50 millimeter lens perfect combination 
everything is working with that tracker. The next tracker in my comparison is this one. This is the so-called Skywatcher Star Adventurer Mini Wi-Fi. There's a Wi-Fi server included, which is pretty nice. With this Star Adventurer Mini you get also your polar wedge to it. You get a polar scope to it, which slides in the right ascension axis. And then everything is put onto this. So with this Star Adventurer Mini you get this polar wedge from Skywatcher. It's the same principle as with the Ioptron. You have also a bubble level here, azimuth and altitude adjustment screws and locking screws. One difference, these locking screws are Allen screws. In comparison, the Ioptron has some hand curled screws on it. So for polar alignment, again, you have this polar scope, which is illuminated, and you have also a peephole here. These two uh, holes act as a peephole and they are also illuminated. But there is one major difference to the others. Here are no controls on it. The Skywatcher Adventure Mini has no controller on it. You always have to use the Skywatcher app to control the functions of the mount. And also you can control your camera release, which is pretty nice. So you can use it for time-lapse photography, night sky photography, whatever you want. Uh, this is a very versatile device. To connect your camera, you have two options. The first one is with this adapter plate. This is brought into here and then you have the option to add your wall head and the camera and then it acts as a simple, super easy sky guider. But Skywatcher offers you also this one here. This is called high precision L bracket. With this L bracket, you can fine align your declination. When locking all up, you can, I think you can see it how to align your camera very properly, especially with longer focal lengths. This is super, super easy because it's so smooth. Better than losing this one and, and rotating it somehow and clamping it again. That's always a bit fiddly. With this fine alignment here, that's very easy, especially with longer focal lengths. So you see, um, this is a problem because it's heavily out of balance. Of course, you can clamp it and this is working, but it will stress the gears. And to avoid this, you can add this optional counterweight. With this Star Adventure Mini, counterweight is optional. Then you can bring your system into alignment and it's, then it's tracking much smoother than before. I think that's a really wonderful compact design except the fact that you don't have buttons on it. So you always have to use the app to control anything on it. Just some additional words on the electronic. So on this side you have your camera snap port where you can connect your camera cable to it. Then you are able to control also the release of the camera and all these time-lapse features on one in one place. The second one is a USB port to power it externally. But you have here a holder for two AA batteries. So now let's go into some serious stuff. There are also bigger trackers available, bigger than the already shown trackers. For example, this one here. This is the so-called iOptron Skyguider Pro. It's also very popular in the last time. And for, for this one here, I decided to choose another tripod, a different tripod. The first tripod is made of carbon and it's super lightweight, four segment legs, also super compact and good for all the trackers up to and including the Skywatcher Star Adventure Mini. But when it comes to bigger trackers like this one here, you should choose a bigger tripod. It can be out of aluminum or wooden tripod. There's also a dedicated tripods available from Skywatcher and Ioptron, um, which are working fine because now we are talking about 
about a bit more payload. So uh, back to the Skyguider Pro. You also, as seen with the Sky Tracker, you get this polar wedge to it uh, to fine align your polar alignment. In this design, the polar scope is integrated in the right ascension axis. It's also illuminated. Let's just have a quick look on the back where the controls are located. So you have a power switch, uh, speed indicators and three buttons. These buttons are used to navigate through the speeds. One time, half time, lunar, solar. You have a, a north-south switch and the polar scope illumination all controllable by these three buttons. Here on the back you have an interesting thing, an auto guider port. That means you can control your uh, tracking with the help of an auto guider camera, which comes then also on the top here, and this will help especially when using longer focal lengths like 300 millimeters. You have also a USB port for external power and to recharge the battery. You have a camera snap port and a connection to, the, to an optional handbox, which is available from iOptron. Another thing to mention, you can replace the polar scope with the iPolar camera, which uh, helps you to automate the polar alignment like the Pole Master did. To connect your camera, you have two options. The first one is this adapter plate comes on the top and then you can again mount your wall head and you have a very very simple but high efficient and precise setup. Also for bigger cameras something like this is possible with this tracker, no issues about it. But if you use something more maybe a telephoto lens, 200 millimeters, maybe a white cat or red cat telescope, which is around 250 millimeters, then there is an L bracket available. No high precision, but L bracket, which is this one here. And this one has this uh, mounting plate for the, for the camera. So this slides onto here. And of course, with an L bracket, you can also attach a counterweight, which comes in the Pro Pack. So then we mount the, this ring adapter to, to the camera. And now we have a very, very efficient, still compact uh, setup for night sky photography. For example, this one here is the EOS 5D Mark III with a 100 mm telephoto lens connected to it. It's also a perfect match for that and can be even longer. With this design, it is a bit more fiddly to uh, set up your declination because you have to loosen these two screws here, rotate it in the position you want, tighten these screws. So that's not as easy as with the Skywatcher. And also, you have to tighten this clutch here, and then this will work. Okay, last but not least, um, a very, very popular Sky Tracker, also from the past. It's maybe the, the oldest one. This is the so called Skywatcher Star Adventurer, and it follows also the same principle as seen before, um, with some smaller design uh, differences. For example, the first difference that you may see is this one here. This is the only control you really need. A hand knob which, where you can select um, the speed of the tracking. And this ranges from solar, lunar, sidereal, half time up to 12 times the speed. That means it's also a perfect choice for time-lapse photography as possible with the Star Adventurer Mini. On the opposite side, you have two buttons to uh, fast uh, move the motor and you have a north-south switch, of course, a camera snap cable port 
an auto guider port as with the iOptron Sky Guider Pro. That means you can also guide your right ascension axis with this one. A USB port for external power. Otherwise, it carries four AA batteries behind this, this cover here. And you have a polar scope included. Now, to connect your camera, Skywatcher uh, gives you also a high precision L bracket with this mount. And same as with the Skyguider Pro, you can mount heavier cameras on it. For example, something like this a modified DSLR with a telephoto lens, 70 to 200 telephoto lens from Tamron, which comes on the top. And then we can, you can balance your system, maybe a bit more, no, something like this. And here's again the large clutch on, this, on the center here to, to tighten your right ascension axis. And with the help of the fine alignment you can precisely choose your declination in the way you want it. With the Star Adventure, you get also a polar scope illumination with it. This is this little piece of plastic here, uh, which comes on the top. Which comes on the top of your polar scope. Something like here. And you need just a CR232 battery to uh, power it and illuminate your polar scope. But uh, please pay attention on this little thing here to not loosen it, especially in the dark when it falls to the ground. So this was my review for the most popular star trackers that are available in 2021. There are also many others available from, from other companies and they are all working in their specification. I would recommend to not overload them and to always start with a wide angle lens to get used to it, to get comfortable with it, and then increasing the focal length as you want up to, yeah, up to the maximum you have. And then you're fine and you will have a lot of fun with these trackers. So I'm looking forward for the next clear nights to test all of them out and, and do some proper images with it. If you have any questions about trackers, astrophotography, astronomical uh, issues, uh, please drop a comment below the video. I will try to answer them. And also, if you have suggestions for other reviews, what you want to see, uh, feel free to, to write us a message. And if you haven't done yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. We would really appreciate it. And so we can focus more on your interests and your needs in terms of astrophotography. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.